I think I can say with relative confidence that I'm not the only weeb that gave anime a backseat in 2020. Not just because I'm now in my 30s and keeping up with anime and the conversations surrounding it on a weekly basis is exhausting, but also because of... you know. The whole idea of watching media while knowing the entire creative team had to make it under vastly different, less than ideal circumstances led to this very complex emotion I could only express as pretty gross. So I just had to take a break from all that, leaving my brain fully empty for some other substitute dumb pop culture thing to take its place. But with the technical roadblocks that the entire pandemic has been providing, finding a form of entertainment that was guilt-free would serve difficult. The whole concept of creativity comes with this inherent understanding that one must be collaborative and outspoken for it to even exist. That media must be created by an intricate web of creative teams as helmed by the most extroverted of extroverts. We're talking people that use their phone as a phone levels of extrovert. And while that may have been how the creativity pipeline worked in the before times, the one pro to a super virus upending society is that those inherent understandings don't exist anymore. Creative ventures were becoming an insular exercise again, leading to projects that lean into the introvert experience because nobody wants to watch videos of travel blogs when travel isn't a thing you're allowed to do anymore, Karen. Quit filming yourself going out to get burgers for your mukbang, those service workers are too underpaid to deal with your ass. Hi, YouTuber, Enter the VTuber, an actual person as represented by a CG avatar with the limited face and body movements that's just janky enough for people to not care because, hey, come on. <laughs> we are back here resting and eating, and uh, I see Kelly has the cuteness shines through. And not shines through regardless, but shines through thanks to how simplistic the concept and execution is. While virtual avatars made to entertain the tired masses definitely isn't breaking new ground, it's the sudden brave new world of 2020 that helped push them out of that niche space into a slightly less niche niche space. Now 15 years separated from the birth of YouTube, internet culture has... I don't want to say matured, so I guess I'll say heavily mutated into a vastly different creature than it was back in the day. The ability to share media in video form has made way for a vast array of novel ideas and concepts, and I feel like VTubers are an echo of sorts to that first initial wave that hit when YouTube first started. Where those early viral YouTube hits really nailed that internet zeitgeist of weird bored people that have just discovered a video camera, so too do these VTuber videos. While the tried and true concept of the let's play is ever present, we also have the vlogger types that'll just talk about their day, the singers, the artists, whatever Hachima is. And they all fall under this collective umbrella that is VTuber. Now usually I get annoyed when people lean heavily on umbrella categorizing. Seeing people refer to something like anime, for example, as an entire genre rather than a medium oversimplifies the conversation for the sake of cherry-picking misconceptions. This in turn leads down the road of silly and, dare I say, outright clownish levels of misinformed takes. But taking the umbrella categorization concept and rolling with it has really benefited VTubers. With a general formula of cute anime person plus blank as its base, YouTubers have become as widespread and varied as any other platform. The possibilities are endless, and as long as it's done with a fictional model representing the creatives in question, that barrier to admission remains low and inviting to anyone. I mean, probably just weebs, but really anyone. Upon first digging into the outer crust that is VTubers, an immediate comparison people will bring up is the concept of the pop idol. While there are a few VTubers that remain indie, the more commercially popular ones tend to be the ones signed under contract to be represented by an agency. The bigger ones being Hololive and Niji Sanji. The companies as a whole tend to lean towards girl members who more or less remain cryptic about their relationship status, hold concerts every now and then, are grouped by generation for easier categorizing based on Ninja Turtle personality. Yeah, idol similarities are all there. And yet even with that immediate influence, VTubers are something that cut deeper than any pop idol ever could. Scrolling through Hololive's weekly schedule is reminiscent of paging through your TV guide, where there is just this sheer density in seeing everything blocked out in front of you. Where YouTube and video streaming has sought to destroy the corded lifestyle that is TV, VTubers transcend that realm, going full circle to embody the original TV experience. Specifically, VTubers level of interactivity through use of both live chat and social media is the natural progression of preschool programming. With the increasing lack of direct social activity even before big world virus, owning and developing your sense for human interaction is something that's become hard to come by past a certain age. I mean, I guess there's public speaking organizations like Toastmasters, but why learn from a textbook when a comic book gets the job done in a funner fashion, you feel me? For streamers and VTubers, there's this chance for fellow introverts to like and discuss their hobbies. Uh, also, I have broccoli here. Have you guys ever seen broccoli before? Jab at their failings. Ichimasu! 
cheer their triumphs. Or just chit chat about simple daily whatevers. And for VTubers in particular, they provide a pressure free environment to do this in. Further adding to this pressure free environment, VTubers provide this wall of fiction that's able to put its viewers at ease in a way that an IRL streamer can't do alone. Like, this isn't an actual factual person you're trying to talk to, it's a shark girl from Atlantis, or a bunny from Pecoland, or a dog from. Dog. No confidence. Sure, the performers themselves are real, but the persona is clearly faked and it's this almost tongue-in-cheek kayfabe treatment of the situation that makes it all the more approachable. Like the extravagant kitschiness of the wrestling world, there's enough of a disconnect between the artist and performer that makes for this entertaining viewing experience. You're whisked away to a different world where you're not just a passive observer, but a supporting character. For better or worse. Cap on top? Pet it? You guys. The conversational stakes are low, and thus we as an audience are more likely to lower our guards and treat these entertainers with a sense of human emotion, even more so than with actual people we meet for the first time because, well, real people suck. But upon browsing through VTuber schedules and slowly picking up on which ones you jive with, the inviting endless possibilities slowly narrow and heighten into an insurmountable wall of backlog. In the few months since VTubers have really taken off in Western audiences, fans are already experiencing burnout from this need to keep up with every ounce of content provided ravenously scarfing down every morsel presented to them in this fit of uncontrollable gluttony. Thanks, Netflix binge model! Rather than this means of face value entertainment, binging has encouraged this weirdly specific behavior of flexing to establish dominance as the alpha weeb. But what these misguided souls fail to comprehend is that VTubers are equal parts about their content as they are about the communal experience. You tune into whichever live streams you can, you fanboy alongside your fellow simps in the chat, and catch the highlights when you're too busy. VTubers are sports. And yet keeping in mind their purely physical appearance, I'd also be remiss if I didn't further dig into VTubers' obvious roots in anime. Even disregarding their character designs, the culture around VTubers especially, when tracking how it's evolved and grown in the West, mirrors the initial anime boom in Western communities almost perfectly. Before the days of Crunchyroll and even Toonami, anime's main form of distribution in Western audiences was through the fans themselves. If you were a budding weeb of the late 80s and early 90s, chances are your main exposure to anime was through fansub VHS tapes or even raw unsubtitled footage. Quality itself ranged from reliable to decently acceptable to buffoonishly amateurish, and yet the consumer themselves was slave to this limited list of suppliers. As interest in anime ballooned over time, however, more reliable and legal forms of distribution arrived, with the dawn of officially licensed DVDs, streaming, and most importantly, dubs. VTubers themselves have experienced a similar arc in their notoriety, and while fan subs of a varied quality still exist and we've yet to develop the technology for reliably accurate live subtitles, the powers that be in Japan are aware enough of their international appeal, with VTuber agencies branching out into Chinese, Indonesian, Korean, Indian, and eventually English-speaking countries. These branches aren't technically dubs, but the general idea remains. Accommodating for fan bases in other languages will increase hype for said fan base in that area. Significantly. We're getting into shallow internet numbers now, but just, just look at Hololive EN's rise. All five members breaking 500k in a mere three months. Gura alone surpassing Hololive Darling Corone and skyrocketing to 2 million subscribers and counting. In just four months. Looking at these new branches outside of their intended audience shows how Japanese fans are in turn creating their own fan subs of clips from Hololive EN in this Uroboros of internet consumption. A reflection of a reflection that is in turn an amalgamation of an endless amount of influences. So with a sheer variety concerning VTubers, I think it's become clear that my previous metaphorical descriptor must be retracted. VTubers aren't these planetary entities with a common core and a consistent list of predefined crusted layers the further you dig into them. Rather, they are a branching pop-cultural Yggdrasil, delving between different genres and subgenres in a multitude of directions to the point that extreme endpoints may not even resemble each other. They are an endless multiverse of distinct cultures and subcultures, iterated ad infinitum without the drawback of losing any of its wow factor upon each of these said iterations. A perpetual motion device of entertainment made to replace while also honoring the mission statement of television. 